comparaître devant Dieu, il est encore temps de confesser vos fautes. Nous allons étouffer avant que vos templiers ne brûlent. Continuing to read the true story of the Templar and Rosicrucians by the author is Domizio Cipriani. I will put, of course, the link in the video description. Domizio Cipriani, Grand Magistral Prior of the Principality of Monaco, Sovereign Military Order of Knights Templar of Jerusalem, in this book clarifies the true story of the Templars and the Rosicrucians from 1317 to the present day following the teachings of Roger, Caro and Pierre Phobus who have done considerable work in analyzing an innumerable quantity of parchments and ancient manuscripts. 
in the work uh, some philosophical and alchemical knowledge of the secret order are revealed today presented by the grand maison metropolitaine d'initiation in the principality of monaco the aim is to clarify and give justice to the persecution suffered by our predecessors and to convey their spiritual values in a more understandable way chapter five the big start it was july 26 1333 that the supreme council of the f.a.r plus c met in solemn assembly in the honor room of the templar commandery of montfort sur argent on the same day at the same time in avignon jean 22 jean 22 also held the public uh, consistoric program proclaimed among other things a mission to the holy land and appointed king philip fort of valois general commander of this enterprise the tithes of this realm will be attributed for a period of six years this decision started a new crusade and prepared the meeting of a future king of france with our brotherhood the Grand Council of the Order examined all the criticisms of the past, present, and predictable events in the future, each repeated the solemn oath to maintain absolute secrecy and not to give the investiture to the confrères unless they have been extensively tested, not according to the traditions of Egyptians and Greek schools, but evaluating their daily behavior. The main tasks were charity, altruism, devotion, loyalty, and above all, being able to keep a secret. All the articles of the rule were re-read, commented, and accepted again. The grand masters were summoned, and for two days the tasks, passwords, and identification marks, and finally the secret alphabet were transmitted to him also called the Templar alphabet. Adam, on August 2nd, at night, showed up at the door of the fortress, was led in, and immediately afterward the Count of de Montfort received him to listen to him. He was the knight Jehan de Kinchamp, Lord of Buzardière, or Buzardière, or Buzardière sent by his father to Avignon to deliver a message to the Cardinal of Montfavet. He had learned of the presence of gentlemen, saved several times by his chaplain in 1314, eager to meet him, and had therefore investigated the papal palace and was sent by the rector of, of Mont Saint Esprit. There he learned, directly from the superior's mouth, that these gentlemen came to thank him and greet him, telling him that they would go to Montfort de Provence. Feeling that a mystery enveloped them, his spirit of adventure pushed him to join them, and on that day his joy was great. The Count sent the for Guidon de Montanor, de la Rovere, and Pierre Le Bon de Lombardy, who smiled as they saw the knight bow before them as if he were before a king. Gentlemen told them, I do not know what impetus you have made for me to ride, but having learned from the rector of the hospitaliers that you were staying in this commandery, I could not prevent you from coming to meet you. I was very young when our chaplain gave your names according to my father, the, the valiant Templars. He was hosting would be arrested. My father then invade, invited our abbot to come and warn you. Many years have passed, but everything remains imprinted in his memory. Please, gentlemen, owe me with you. The boy was twenty-five years old with intelligent eyes. He seemed strong and full of goodwill. He could not integrate him into the order because the number of thirty-three could not be increased. 
It was then decided to keep him as guy of Montana Squire, and then we will see. The history of F. A. R. Plus C. He would not write his name in the I grades, but a sentence indicates that he will later take the place of César Mainbiel, who died accidentally. The fiery young rider had therefore successfully passed the tests and the seven initiatory degrees. The stay of the confrères lasted many months, during the course of which they put the learned theory into practice. A local on the ground was equipped as a laboratory, many experiments were made, and if we check some transcribed notes, not everything worked according to its degree. Many times the container burst. In any case, all came to the purpose. To thank the Lord of Montfort, the Emperor had a series of graffiti engraved and offered him a standing gold ingot on which was engraved the coat of arms of the order. A note confirms that this heraldic ingot was hidden in a secret corridor between two walls. In, on the day of the year, 1334, after having participated in the Holy Mass and having celebrated, our 33 brothers left the friendly castle. Crosswords after crosswords, their number will decrease, sometimes separating them forever. The order of the F.A.R. plus C took life virtually. At this point, it became materially impossible to follow the tracks of the order as a whole. It will be possible to find it only by members, as indicated in our chronological list and on the archive documents. These documents, these parchments, were these Masonic uh, diplomas, Rosqua of Malta, have always belonged to the dignitaries of our order constituting their personal archives. Even when uh, the diplomas were in the name of another candidate, the calligraphic signatures appear and show that they were part of the Grand Councils and that this candidate was a frère aîné. Chapter 6 Chronological List of Emperors I'm not sure I want to read this. My goal is not to read his entire book, but to read what interests me particularly. Alchemic Historical Passage Hermes Three Majestus, in the oldest of the great Eurofans of ancient Egypt, believed to have linked the tradition of extinct races to that of today. Among the oral Hermetic traditions that have reached us, there is a Kimbalion that represents them at their best. The hermetic laws expose a revelation that makes light, inspiring the depth of the intellect and of the spirit from the slavery of matter. Under the name of royal art of source, sacred art, from the ancient Egyptian priesthood profess and practice by a series of doctrines of which only a few remains have survived. These doctrines as a whole embrace all the relationships of men with nature and their practice made the initiate king of the material universe then royal art. If our time had provided us with a healthy, harmonious, beautiful and perfect happy life, no one would have had the idea of looking for something else. We shamelessly acknowledge that we are mere children about wisdom. Let's stop our insane search for effects, replacing it with knowledge and control of causes. Let us return to the direct path of evolution, conform ourselves to the laws of life, and immediately we will see peace and harmony emerge around us. Everyone knows that it's not enough to know the remedies, but that they must be applied in the same way. It's not enough to know that 
we must act or think in this or that way we must and must necessarily conform our lives to our conscience we must imperturbably practice what we know we must judge the tree by the fruit it is the acts that count both in the realm of the ideal and in the material world the laws of the absolute are ideally beautiful but if we do not realize them concretely we will be like a splendid feast before which we would let ourselves die of hunger as soon as solomon uh, was elevated to the throne of david though he had not yet received the fullness of knowledge and wisdom which he so ardently desired he renewed the alliance that his father had made with iram king of tyre the alliance that made him become the greatest and the most famous architect whose allegorical works still serve today as a basis for those works of masons and templar solomon having acquired a profound knowledge of nature communicated them by initiation to the workers worthy of carrying out the plans of the temple that they were supposed to build and on the day of the inauguration of this building they received together the value of their sublime labors since the temple was acquired in all its perfection the workers were dismissed with distinctions relating to their particular work however the leaders of the companions com remained with this prince and it was on the advice of these wise collaborators that solomon reached the highest degree of glory that no man could obtain but then dazzled by his power and the splendor of his throne he lost sight of the wisdom that had brought him up the companions of his neighbors terrified by the abuses of science left entirely from the court and brought to other countries the initiation of the temple of jerusalem where it spread with different peoples the initiation did not differ substantially as they spoke and acted as insiders workers of the temple they asked them to honor the truth that had disappeared before their eyes in its full splendor and being so convinced that the weight where they were from the re reconstruction of the universal temple was a pointless point they tried to perpetuate the same initiation that had enlightened their mind on human mysteries and the universe they had been careful to transmit the ceremonial emblems as acquired but in recent times due to a sort of publicity that derives from the guilty condescension of, of poorly educated teachers and the indiscreet curiosity of the men of the century an ignorant and profane crowd is was introduced in the temples once the professors no longer saw themselves surrounded by their brothers according to science they maintained a profound silence on the sacred initiation as well as for the main meaning of true degrees so that the profession which was the prerogative of the masters had been separated from them Egypt, home of the pyramids and sphinxes, was the cradle of hidden wisdom and mystical teachings. The first principle implies the truth that everything is spirit. This law radically affirms the evident nullity of the matter from the absolute point of view. Matter is just a relativity that always changes and the spirit invariable controls by the very fact of its invariability control can be more or less direct more or less rapid but it is not always and inevitably effective this principle is establishing the mental nature of the universe explain all the various mental and psychic 
phenomena, the phenomena of life, matter, energy in a word, all that is the spirit, which in itself is unknowable and indefinable, but can be considered and thought of as a universal, infinite uh, living spirit. This law is one of the best known of all hermetic laws. It is found in the famous uh, emerald tablets. There are life plans that we don't know completely, but when we apply the principle of correspondence to them, the law of analogy, we become capable of further understanding the principle of correspondence manifests and applies everywhere in the universe, on the various planes of the universe, material, mental, and spiritual. The ancients consider it one of the most important mental tools. Knowledge of the principle of correspondence allows men to intelligibly deduce the unknown from the noun. This principle implies the truth that everything is in motion. Everything vibrates, nothing is at rest. For thousands of years, the masters of ancient Egypt have declared this principle. Explain that the differences between the various manifestations of matter, energy, soul, and even spirit are the consequences of an unequal proportion of vibrations. Everything in the universe moves, everything vibrates. This is true for the mental plane whose vibrations govern the state and even for the spiritual plane. Everything is double, everything has two hands, extremes touch each other, all truths are only half truths. The opposite poles can be reconciled. There are the whole paradoxes that can be explained by this law. The opposites are in reality only the two extremes of the same thing, hot and cold, although opposites are in fact the same thing. They are simply distinguished by their degree difference. It is possible to change the vibrations of hatred in the vibrations of love in the mind and mind of others. Understanding this principle makes it possible to change one's polarity and that of others. This principle implies that it occurs in all things, a movement of coming and going, a flow and a reflux, a swing back and forth. Hermeticists have understood that this law manifests itself in creation and destruction, progress and decay. They discovered that its application was universal. No one can cancel this principle, nor stop its course. But we must learn to avoid the effects on ourselves through mastery. The master, with the use of his will, ends up achieving a degree of balance and mount mental firmness. There is a cause for any effect, an effect for any cause. The case does not exist because there are different plans of causes and effects. The, the upper floor still dominates the lower floor. Nothing can ex escape the law entirely. The masters rise to the highest level, dominating their feelings, their character, their qualities and their surroundings. They use the principle instead of being its tools. They obey the causality of the upper floor, but they reign on their own plane. The manifestation of this law is found in the mind of man, composed of superconscience, or me subjective masculine principle and sub Quotients, subjective, passive, or me subliminal. No physical, mental, or spiritual creation is possible without this law. Everything contains both male and female elements, or the principle itself. This law of attraction is directly proportional, so much as to the power of these vibrations 
of the same sense. Love is one-sided, absolute, and in no way worries about being returned, like the light of the sun shining on everyone, indiscriminately friends or enemies. It is love that has communicated to its doctrine the surprising vitality that can be seen. Only the law of cultivated love makes it possible to reach the highest peaks of human evolution. All vibrations naturally tend to rise to the scale of universal harmony. It is the law of evolution or law of life. With the operation of the law of life or evolution, all the vibrations of the universe tend to constantly travel up and ascending scale. Don't make the mistake of thinking that man is only a blind automaton away from there. The hermetic teachings tell us that man can use the law to control the law and that the superior will always prevail against the lower, the lower will. I will end with the hermetic axiom, quote, to possess knowledge if it doesn't manifest itself if it is not experienced in one's actions is like the hoarding of a precious metal a vain and insane thing knowledge like health it is destined to serve end of the quote wise is used on the top floor but is served on the lower level he obeys the laws from above, but on his plan he must be a master. Furthermore, by doing so, it constitutes a part of the principle instead of opposing it. Essay is part of the law. Understanding how it works, he uses it instead of being a slave. Anyone who understands this truth is on the right track to master so the signs of Egypt say I thank you for listening